on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hi everybody. <laughs> Welcome to episode 11 of the Beat on Bits podcast. I'm your host. My name is Brandon and this is my show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. This is Roxine. I have joining me today. Say hi, Roxine. Hi, Roxine. <laughs> so, Roxine <laughs> is a is an is an old timely friend from back in the days of uh, U of A. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I met you there though. No, we met at a at a church fellowship group. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That so was, that was fun. What two thousand and eight or nine? Some many moons ago. Jeez, that's a long time ago. Yeah, it's a, it's a long time. We're in 2018 now. Ooh. I have to keep reminding myself that. Yeah. And uh, Roxine works at a pharmacy, and she can tell us about that drug dealer life. Maybe today we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's my guest today. Uh, you know who I am. Maybe. Oh, one thing I wanted to include was to like briefly reintroduce myself every episode. So if someone's just watching this as their first episode, they don't feel totally lost in mm-hmm. who I am too. Yeah. Because <laughs> they know who you are now. But yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm Brandon. Um, this is the 11th episode of a podcast I'm running where I want to talk about passions, projects, and playlists from a bunch of my friends and kind of give them a place to share what they're passionate about and share some fun and exciting things that they've been doing related to those passions and then talk about some music that we like. And then at the end of each show, I do a little live mix mashup for you because I also DJ and during the daytime, I am a software developer. Yeah, so that's me. So yeah, now you know who I am, you know who Roxine is, you know what the show's about, so let's get into it. So Roxine. (laughs) What can you tell us about your passions? What have you Uh, really been passionate about either for quite a while or just recently? What kind of stuff have you um, been keeping up with? What, what piques your interest? A lot of things really. I work as a pharmacy technician during the day. So that's kind of nine to five, more like 10 to six, but, um, so I don't know. I've been interested in a lot of different things over the years. I do have a blog currently, but it's not really that well known. I don't know how like to gauge that kind of thing. Um, that means go check out the blog while it's, <laughs> well, before it blows up or else she won't read your comments because she's going to be yeah. flooded with them after yeah. this after this episode today. I hope so. I hope they're is going to be some traffic, but we'll see. So what's your blog about and what's it called? Um, funny enough, I call it Bubble Boat, but I think it's like from a conversation that I actually had with you when we were at the U of A. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and I don't remember what happened, but like, I think you were talking about how one of your friends met like this cute guy or something, and then he was like really, really sweet to her. And then you said something about him being a dream boat and then oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I heard steamboat and <laughs> I don't know like bubble boat just came out I think like somebody was blowing saliva bubbles or something like that oh I don't know I don't remember yeah that. something like that I definitely remember accidentally calling somebody a steamboat <laughs> instead of a dream boat <laughs> yeah and I'm like oh that's that's cute like mm, I don't know. yeah yeah and I actually had it as like bubbleboat.net because I can buy the .com domain and mm. um Yeah, and I don't know, I just decided to start from scratch and I canceled the domain thing because I was paying like just for nothing really. Mm. And I decided to go back to WordPress and uh, I still have that right now. Um, Yeah, and uh, I've dabbled here and there and actually like my tagline in uh, my Instagram profile is professional dabbler because I I like a whole bunch of things and I feel like my passion is in trying everything out and dabbling here and there really Mm -hmm. yeah I don't want to like box myself off I guess yeah for sure I think a blog is like a really good medium to kind of explore and Mm -hmm. dabble in a bunch of different things yeah so what kind of things have you been writing about since you started the Uh, blog or since you uh, rebooted it 
Yeah, I haven't been really consistent because of a lot of changes in between my starting it till now. Um, but I do watch a lot of like YouTube videos when I'm free and or when I get home and I just wanted to like think about other things. So I try to like write posts almost like a wordy version of those YouTube videos. Uh -huh. Um but I don't know if it's oh well, it's not got the same kind of vibe I guess like people would actually have to sit down and like read. Mm. But I don't know I just find that it works for me. It's more like a documentation for myself. Like I want to share things I like, things I've discovered and pretend to be a influencer I guess. So it's okay. You yeah. just everyone's <laughs> pretending until they actually are. Yeah. The fake it till you make yeah. it thing. <laughs> So, I don't know. I thought know. it was funny. Uh, I, I just like kind of browsed your blog today. Yeah. And then I saw, since you've rebooted it, you've kind of found a nice, um, I guess like unified theme. Yeah. With the pictures and stuff. It looks really nice. And yeah. then yeah, one was like, um, organize or like, um, I have this makeup wish list. Yeah. And then the next one was watching YouTube video videos about decluttering your space. And then the <laughs> next one is like, now I have an anti-wish list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, oh, I can do that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still kind of trying to find where I fit in and my footing in all of this. I kind of don't want to just do makeup related things. I want to like have think pieces, but I don't know. I feel like sometimes those get a bad rap because it's kind of like, you know, this person who's a blogger and then they're just sitting there and like, oh, what's the most provocative kind of topic that I can like get people riled up and, you know, Gotta get, that get followers and yeah. yeah, so I don't want to be like that. And I feel like I'm not there yet. Like I'm far from being at that point, but I want something that's really me and more authentic and it has my voice in it instead mm. of like I'm following like, oh, this top blogger has so many followers, I must do what she's doing kind of mm. thing. So it's going to be kind of like a melting pot of like different things I'm interested in. And at least that's where I want to go. So I think a lot of bigger blogs kind of start that way anyway. Mm -hmm. And then once something hits, they just kind of hone in on that. Yeah. And then you get the experts of like various mm -hmm. topics. And then at that point, it's not even like your spouting off nonsense to get clicks yeah. it's that you're actually providing useful information or some interesting details mm -hmm. and the people in that whole world are interested in it so yeah. they just come to you and see what Roxine has to say on the latest yeah. blank <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's a hobby it's something that hopefully will grow into something bigger but for now I'm happy where I am just dipping my toes in so. nice what, what is it that you like about writing it's just that's kind of the the medium that is it is my best pre with your preferred side. medium because i don't know i this is like my first youtube related kind <laughs> of thing so i don't really know what to expect i've always been really used to being behind the camera behind the mm. keyboard and um yeah because you do lots of photography and videos and stuff too uh, right or maybe well, randomly randomly like, yeah i haven't used my camera in a very long time but i did use it this past weekend for like a mini event mm. um how did that one go it was it went well it was for um emac uh, one of the other nonprofits that i volunteer with oh, okay. um, so we had a, a little session for kids ages uh, 13 to 18 because a lot of uh, I guess we're like switching gears here, but like a lot of the conversations surrounding mental health, like it's the adults, it's the people who are kind of established and they have a platform to like speak out or just say what they have gone through and whatnot. And most of the times when you t think about kids or teenagers, you're like, oh, they're not adults. They like, what do they know? They have so much more to learn still, but you know, mental health like affects anybody like mm. you could be born with it too yeah if, you know fetal alcohol or whatever and so we had a bunch of kids come in and then it was just kind of like a brainstorming kind of session to see like if they know what mental health is or if they know 
um, what campaigns there are or what other committees are out there and what they would like to see because we don't want to just focus on just adults or yeah. able-bodied people or we want the whole demographic yeah so, yeah it was really productive and um, we gained a lot of insight and there's still a lot of work to do so we're pretty excited about that cool so that was more kind of like um, just getting the resource information out mm-hmm. to these kids so that yeah yeah because you're totally right in thinking that people view teens and kids as oh they don't really know anything yeah. they're young but I think the reality is they have it harder than a lot of adults too mm-hmm. right because they have even less control like at least if you're an adult mm-hmm. you can technically make decisions on your own mm-hmm. but if you're a kid like what what can you do a lot of the time especially yeah. if you're a younger kid and you're having problems with your parents and stuff mm-hmm. yeah so that's good what's that organization called again uh edmonton mental health awareness committee um okay. but we're technically a society now but we just mm-hmm. Decided to stick with the name because Emac sounds better than Imhas or whatever. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> and you were just taking pictures of the events, mm-hmm. or okay. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of still in the works, but we're planning to relaunch our website, and there may or may not be a blog associated with that, Ooh. and I may or may not be associated with that blog, so we'll see. Cool. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's 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 nice when you can see an opportunity to mm-hmm. put your hobby to use to, like, other people as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. so... I, I was, I'm like fortunate enough to be at that state with mm-hmm. DJing for the past few years because mm-hmm. I just started it as a hobby when I was working at Forever 21 and then some people liked it and then I got my own stuff mm-hmm. started practicing and people were like hey want to play this and this I'm like yeah and then yeah. it just kind of rolls up from there so yeah. hopefully you get to do some more fun blogging stuff too mm-hmm. did, did you get to do any um, like professional photography events before mm-hmm. No, not really. That's, again, like another thing I'm dabbling in. So, like, I would like to, but I guess it really depends on what I can find. And I haven't really had a chance to actively go look for opportunities like that Mm. with, you know, my current day job. And just, it's something maybe I'll do in the future. But for now, I'm pretty content with what I'm doing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so just kind of chugging along, mm-hmm. doing the blogs here and there, yeah, photographing whenever mm-hmm. you have a, a nice, fun opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Is, is there is there anything like you wish you could do more, be more involved with? Say you didn't have any of your current commitments, mm-hmm. and you can just do any, whatever you want with any of these passions, totally free reign. Mm, I think I would want to combine photography and stories kind of like going around with my camera and like talking to people like just anybody Hmm. and like blogging about it oh it's almost kind of like journalism but not really i don't know i just like listening to people's stories because i used to be like such a hermit and i'm just like oh afraid of everything and all i had as a point of reference to anything in life was just like my experiences Hmm. and I don't know, like the past few years, meeting different people and joining groups and really opening up and stepping out of my comfort zone, I've managed to like just do a lot more with life and feel like there's more to life than what I had already known. Yeah, for sure. So a lot of it comes from like just the people around you and you know, you have to kind of like embrace that this person might be of a different religion. They might have a completely different sexual orientation and their struggles are like just as valuable as yours yeah so i don't know i think that would be something that i would like to do kind of like humans of new york or whatever Um, but not anonymous i guess i don't know it's so like non-anonymous humans of edmonton (laughs) (laughs) maybe yeah um oh that'd be really cool yeah yeah i see what you mean like it's like journalism but not i don't know too much about humans of new york Mm -hmm. but that sounds like it'd be really interesting to yeah. follow and see people's yeah. stories, different perspectives mm-hmm. and kind of thing. Yeah. That, that's definitely like one of the 
uh, goals I have for this podcast mm-hmm. too is to kind of see a hidden side of people that you wouldn't normally see yeah. and encourage other people to have these deeper conversations with people mm-hmm. in their lives too. Because yeah. I don't know. I'm, I don't know where exactly the belief comes from for myself, but mm-hmm. I feel like there's something you can learn from like everyone, no matter who they are. Mm-hmm. And even if it seems like someone is a total dick or they're just full of hate or something, there's no way they're always like that. Yeah. They weren't just born and be like, screw you, man. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm it's, just going to. Yeah. Some, something happened. Just and, hate on everybody. <laughs> yeah. And something happened at some point and it's, it, it's like a challenge to find out what that is. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can do that for someone that is in that state, it's like you both grow from it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. So speaking of, um, people who are filled with hate, <laughs> uh, this, it's, it's a really bad segue, but I, yeah. I had it in my mind before the show today. And I just wanted to talk about it, but, uh, so there's this lady at work okay. and she comes from Malaysia mm-hmm. and she came here quite a while ago. And then she said, um, Malaysia and a few surrounding countries, uh, where they're still practicing like Sharia law, mm-hmm. um, that I think it was in Malaysia or, or cause you're from Brunei. Yeah. It's most likely in Brunei. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, it might've been Brunei that she was talking about then, but she said, uh, the courts will vary depending on which religion you're part of. So, mm. um, if you're like a Christian man, for example, mm-hmm. and you want to get a divorce with your wife, the Christian man can convert to like Muslim. And then in that where Sharia law applies in the same country, just because your religion is different, you, your wife doesn't get anything and you can just like kick her to the curb kind of thing. Okay. So she was telling me stories about how, um, her uncle or brother or something did that. Cause he's living in Brunei and, uh, he wanted to get a divorce, but he just changed his religion and like just pretended to be muslim so like he just gets to keep everything <laughs> that's so weird yeah so, so it, then after the whole divorce is done he reverts or yeah he can revert if he wants to what? or just like do oh. whatever or just like leave that's awful i didn't i've never heard of that yeah th- this is yeah th- well okay if, if anyone listening is forming an opinion from this story do your own research because i just heard this from yeah. a lady at work who's from malaysia who, who knows <laughs> someone in brunei so this is like fourth hand knowledge for you so don't form your opinions from this <laughs> but it was just kind of an interesting thor- uh, story oh. to think about because it's like how does such a law come into power anyway that gives women like zero power and it's a, who... it's a very very traditional and almost like sexist i guess yeah. not almost it's like extreme it sexism is. Well, i don't <laughs> yeah. want to be like oh, <laughs> condemn yeah. everyone <laughs> yeah well not, not to condemn like the yeah. whole the muslim religion or anything but that specific um i guess they say that's like the the i, I guess to put a parallel mm-hmm. view on it from i don't know like catholicism or something mm-hmm. it's like oh you do the 10 commandments very strictly no exceptions nothing outside applies kind of thing mm-hmm. if that makes any sense yeah, yeah, it's very, very restrictive, and I don't know, I just, yeah, the part where, like, the guy can just revert, that's just, that's just, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, at that point, it's like, you're not even respecting the religion yeah. anymore, you're just letting people exploit the system, oh. and perpetuating this ongoing extreme sexism. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, uh, yeah, it mostly favors the men, and never the women, it's awful yeah so that's just kind of like going back to the bad segue it just made me think (laughs) of that because uh it's like okay some somebody came up with this thing at some point Mm -hmm. and you have to wonder what that person's story was coming up with Mm -hmm. this thing like did they just hate women so much or did they yeah you like you can't know because it's such an ancient thing but you can ask people today why they're still following it when maybe they don't even know the story of where it mm-hmm. came from. It was just their kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's healthy to kind of question like w- where your values actually come from sometimes because mm-hmm. are they really your values or did you just get told to do these things mm-hmm. at some random point by some random person? Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was just kind of what happened today. And it was just sitting in my mind brewing like <laughs> on the way home. I'm like, oh, I got to talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was already like, even before today, I kind of had the mindset where everyone kind of has a hidden side and mm-hmm. 
everyone has a story kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then that was just kind of something that was along the same lines in one way or another. (laughs) Yeah, I've just, I don't know, I've just been so like addicted to listening to podcasts that are about like stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, the story driven ones are really nice. Mm -hmm. um, Because they have like some good editing and stuff too. And the music like just pulls you into it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, what, what are some of this podcasts you've been listening to? Uh, I've been listening to Criminal a lot. I'm, I think I'm listening to it like backwards from the newest to the old, older ones. I mm. meant like, because I think they're at episode 83 or something and I'm in episode 54. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, because it's perfect because I drive half an hour to work and then oh, yeah. I drive another half hour back home and then the episodes are around like half hour. So yeah, it's nice how it works. It kind yeah. of turns... Uh, an other otherwise boring or monotonous drive into yeah. like a fun it's like you're watching tv for an hour yeah. or learning something yeah it's completely like replace my music playlist because i yeah. would find myself getting distracted by like oh i know i've already listened to this and i would like skip it yeah but yeah it's really educational and like i don't know like, like i never knew that they had this like forensic research center where it's like you have dead bodies just lying out in the open oh like, really at various stages of decom decomposition and yeah. it's all for science and i'm like oh i didn't know that and yeah it was it's amazing that's cool yeah. did you ever get to work with anything so exciting during your school or training mm, not really no dead bodies to no put I, I don't think into. i can i don't think i can stomach that like uh, yeah <laughs> it's hearing creepy. about it's one thing and then yeah. if you see yeah me too like i don't know have you ever seen a dead body in person before uh not in person but like like real footage of, oh real fo- yeah. yeah yeah even those kind of disturbing like it's depending on the nature of the video mm. but yeah even just seeing it's like well oh, the funerals kind of count unsane. i feel like it's a little bit disrespectful to talk about dead people at funerals like open casket kind of thing oh i guess that's like different because yeah. that's the 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 premise is a lot different in that case <laughs> yeah, like, like, this just... person's you, you, you know that this person's deceased and you're all there to kind of like mm-hmm. celebrate their the, the memories mm-hmm. and whatever uh but yeah no i saw one in the river <gasps> yeah. Ew, here in edmonton yeah oh god uh. this is like a few years ago like by the river boats on the river what, what was it he or she bloated already or yeah yeah already gone. bloated oh. so we had to like call the cops and the cops had to come to the river and just say was this person already here They're like yeah <laughs> no <laughs> we, we put didn't them there. <laughs> yeah. no i put them there <laughs> yeah we didn't see much so we just saw kind of like the the like back and back of neck because they're like mm. like they're just stuck on a like a um there's like a post in the water and they're just like beside the post oh man yeah so we didn't see a full dead body but just like the upper part and it was but like, you knew bloated. it was a dead body yeah because like, oh. i thought it was just a t-shirt at first i'm like <laughs> a t-shirt looks really weird and then like i look a bit harder and then i see like there's like a person in that shirt <laughs> but they're a little bloated how yeah. long ago was that this was maybe three years ago oh yeah but that, that's yeah. the only time I've seen it. And it was kind of gross. Yeah, that's why I stay home and blog and don't do anything. <laughs> like, I don't go outside. <laughs> you're saying you, you, that used to be you. Now you're going out more and talking to people and now not I'm seeing scared. I'm bodies. thinking about it. I'm thinking <laughs> about it. No, don't, don't go back. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know how we wound up here, but yeah, don't don't, don't let that sway. Yeah, you. I don't remember. <laughs> that's one thing that um, I wanted to ask a mm-hmm. few minutes ago, but totally just blue past is mm-hmm. uh when you mentioned how you used to be kind of hermiting more and then mm-hmm. decided getting out there and exposing yourself more and experiencing more what like what kind of transitioned you into that process um just growing up really like i don't know i used to be really optimistic and happy and just carefree and then I was completely different up until I moved to Canada in like 2008. Hmm. And, How old were you um, when you moved again? 19. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. I've always been like kind of like I think it happened when my dad was like, 
oh you're always like so trusting of people and you're gonna get like mugged one day like my my dad is a typical asian like mm. you're gonna die <laughs> <laughs> just like fear mongering yeah. yeah and um so i remember when i first moved here i moved on my own and i lived in this like basement suite kind of thing like right by the university and i literally knew nobody mm. and i always had like my dad's words like ringing in my head saying that oh you have to be careful about this you have to be careful about this blah 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 and then i guess like eventually over time like i just got so careful and timid and scared and at one point like i think this was like my second year of university like i just completely wasn't that happy version of myself mm. and um i managed to finish like um my undergrad and then things got even worse because again like i had talked about how at that point my point of reference was like my own experiences so i didn't know a lot of the opportunities are out there like i didn't realize that maybe university wasn't for me after all and um i had gone to university like because of my parents really and i wasn't able to find a job and i was working like three different random part times just to make up a full-time kind of hours i guess and this was after you graduated university mm -hmm. yeah and then um that was when like i started questioning like okay well now what and yeah things just got worse and worse from there because I, I was worried about money and i didn't know what mental health was i didn't know who i could go and talk to and yeah and um there are good things that happened as well i met a bunch of people that are like just helped me so much and um i decided to go into farm tech school and that was like one of the best decisions i've ever made for myself because i knew that that was what i wanted and not my parents mm. um but still like you know after like what six years of like not knowing what the heck was going on it's kind it's good it's given me like a lasting damage to like my sense of who i was and um yeah i feel bad because i i am the type of person that's like when i get comfortable with somebody i just overshare everything and i didn't realize how damaging that could be to the person that i'm talking to and um so it's a little bit difficult to talk about but i don't mind <laughs> um this week would have been like a full year since i went on uh, antidepressants oh. so yeah it's really really helped a lot and um before this i was like really ashamed of it and like something's wrong with me like nobody i knew growing up ever talked about like mental health or like being on meds or getting therapy or like suicidal thoughts and all that kind of stuff and yeah i i don't know it was just really really weird until one day um one of my friends she texted me and she's like you know i think there's something wrong with you and you need to go see your doctor mm -hmm. and yeah so i went on antidepressants it was a really weird feeling like that first dose it's like you're high and drunk and sober at the same time it, it, oh. it's weird and um a few months after that i think i was still kind of like really moody and really i don't know just i just dumped everything onto my friends and mm -hmm. yeah i they came together and decided to like hold an intervention for me and i was like what the hell is going on oh my <laughs> god somebody is gonna kill me <laughs> but i'm really really thankful for that and um yeah. that was kind of like the kick in the butt that like made me reevaluate myself and like really think about like who i was before like the healthy happy like way better than anything like version of myself mm. that 
I want to go back to that. So that's why I started like, you know, really deciding if I want to like vlog again or use my camera、mm. again. And, you know, I love watching YouTube videos. So, you know, like that's where I get inspiration for my blog posts. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done or where I would be still without that intervention. Like, it was the weirdest thing. I was like, Sobbing and crying, and ugh, it was disgusting. <laughs> But cha-、yeah. change isn't always, it's always not always pretty. Yeah. Sometimes you need those, those big pushes to kind of get up the hill. Yeah. Sometimes you're just so in over your own head that like you don't see what other people see. Yeah. And it really needs like someone else to like sit you down and like just, hey, wake up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you see, like, do you feel like you're kind of on the way up still, or you're past it and you can look back and laugh about、mm. it, or where do you think you're at now? I think I've always been pretty self aware, but I've always thought that, oh, that's just the way I am. But now I feel like I can see more clearly how my actions and my words and my emotions and my moods. How I affect other people too, and they don't、mm-hmm. necessarily deserve to like feel the same way as I do because it's not their battle, it's not their problem. And I feel like I still have a lot to learn on, like, you know, different things that bother me. I can talk to different people about it, and not just the same person over and over again about everything. So, yeah, it's, it's a lifelong journey and learning. So, yeah.、Mm-hmm. Well, what would you want to say to、um, say you could go back and like tell yourself something like right as you were sliding into this? Was there anything you would say to yourself, or you would change anything and just let yourself go through it? or? I think I would have told myself to follow my instincts. And that moment in second year when I felt that、um, university wasn't for me, I should have done something about it instead of like keep going. Yeah. And finishing something that I'm not really doing anything with. But I don't know. I don't regret it. Like, I don't think regret is the word, but I wish I had the option to like, see that there are other ways to go about things. So, but it's in the past. so Yeah, for sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people kind of going through the same phase.、Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of us feel too. Some lesser degrees than others, like you mentioned, being partway through university or partway through some program and、mm-hmm. feeling like you just really don't want to do it. Yeah. And especially for a lot of、um, like families where the parents just tell them exactly what to do with their、mm-hmm. careers. Because even I don't come from an Asian family and I had that happen to me, like not as, <laughs>、yeah. with not as, as much fear mongering or anything, but still just like, I don't know what I want to do. And then the parents say, just do this thing because you can get a good job and blah,、mm-hmm. blah, blah. Yeah. So, for anyone who's in that situation and kind of feels like maybe they don't want to be doing what they're doing, what would you say to those people?、Mm, it's okay to change your mind. Like, if you change your mind and you're not going to die, like, yeah. a lot of the times it's like that sense that like, your world is going to be turned upside down, your dad is going to. Why did you change your career course and he's gonna have a heart attack? I'm like, no, that's not likely gonna happen ever. Like, your happiness is yours.、Mm-hmm. It's not anyone else's to control, not even like your parents. So. That's true. It's almost like a strange finding, finding this kind of balance between valuing yourself and、mm-hmm. also, also valuing others. Because I feel like one component, like you just mentioned, is oh, if, if I quit, my parents are going to have a heart attack and die. <laughs> But like, you need to get over yourself in the sense of, okay, you're important to yourself, you're important to your parents, but you're not so important that they're going to have a heart attack if you change your mind on、mm-hmm. something that you want to do with your life.、Yeah. Unless maybe you, you want to be like a, like a porn actress or something. <laughs> well, don't watch it, dad. Don't watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for in, in general, I think in most cases, it's、mm-hmm. fine if you want to pursue what you want to pursue.、Yeah. And then it might be hard for some time, but eventually, if you truly feel happy、mm-hmm. w h a t you're doing, I think other people、yeah. will notice that too and、mm-hmm. share the happiness with you. Yeah. Yeah. 
so that's a that's a really good point um yeah if uh we're on a bit of a, a somber note, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe if, if there's yeah, if there's any other uh, other passions you wanted to bring up, or mm. is there mm. is there anything that you wish the rest of the world could see about you and some know about some cool things you're doing or some cool things that you're interested in? I'm not. I don't know. I'm I'm still dabbling. Like that's what I love to do, and. I'm always like looking for inspiration on new blog posts and like opportunities like to use my camera more and it's kind of hard because it's like such a long winter like I wanted to do more but it's like yeah like who wants to like go outside and take pictures in the snow and it's like dirty <laughs> You can do some nice snow pictures yeah. and some nice mud pictures yeah. <laughs> I don't know I feel like it's also like I'm not confident in my skills quite yet so mm. i need to practice a little bit more and um yeah i've been just kind of living the life <laughs> that's cool so maybe we can talk about kind of the the songs that we chose mm -hmm. for today so yeah we uh, uh, kind of confusion happened today right before <laughs> we started <laughs> Because Rakshin sent me these Spotify links to the songs that she wanted to include for today's discussion, today's episode. And I clicked them, but they're all the wrong songs. But I think they're on the same playlist, so they have a similar feel anyway. Yeah, I don't so, know how that happened. Good thing I asked. I'm yeah, like, what are you? Who are you talking about? Song? It's because I'm I'm a, cheap, I'm a cheap guy who didn't pay for Spotify, so they gave me some broken links. Sponsor us! Sponsor us! Hey, dude, Sp Spotify is going public. On April third or April second, really? yeah. Oh. So, hmm. if you want to get in on Spotify, like you could have got in on, I don't know, Apple or Microsoft back in the day, you can buy some Spotify in April, maybe. <laughs> don't don't take this as advice. Just just for your information. Yeah. <laughs> so your songs today were. Um. So I really really like um, remixes and covers, and like for remixes, I feel like. If the original song is like the older, the better for some reason. Hmm. I think um, you spoke about what's that song like "Fly Away" or something. Oh, Lenny about, Kravitz. Yeah, 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 about how old it was. Yeah, it was on classic rock radio <laughs> when it was like, oh, I used to love that song. Holy yeah, crap, that was a long time ago. So yeah, and uh, like "Sweet Dreams" by U Eurythmics or whatever. Oh it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, one of my favorite songs, and they. Like, it always makes me think of that scene where, um, I forget his name, but one of the X-Men characters, when he's, like, saving the, um, Institute from blowing up. I feel like there's multiple X-Men characters. No, no, the, the, the latest X-Men one, the... Oh, okay. Like, um... Not, not, not Deadpool, right? Like, no, no, Like no, no, an no. X-Men specific movie. Yeah. Like, um... I can't remember. I think, I think it's I the latest one. Now. Yeah, it's... Yeah, you have to look it up. Like I'll, it I'll always it reminds me of that scene, and uh, Wait, so sweet, sweet dreams reminds you of an X Men scene. I know it's weird. Oh, that's so <laughs> like strange. you, you got to look it up. It's I don't know. It's yeah, because okay. um, it's always been one of my favorite songs. Like I, it's just something about the beat to it, mm -hmm. and then I was listening to like you know um, this playlist on Spotify where it's literally like called remixes, and then it came up, and I'm like, oh, this is such a different chill version of like this really really good song so mm. i chose that nice um and uh the other one i kind of think it's more like a cover because it's a completely different person singing it it's um don't you worry child um, oh like the the um who is the original Swedish one? house mafia yeah yeah yeah, yeah? yeah. yeah. so it's kind of, it's sung by this girl by the name beth i guess and I found that her version is very, very soothing because she has like a really, really sweet voice. And I just thought, okay, well, that's what music and creativity and art is supposed to be. Like, it doesn't have to always be like, what's original, what's original. Mm. But if you get inspired by something that's already been created, just do your own thing and make it yours. And you know it just gives a completely different vibe so i really really like that nice and the third one is puffy by mason maynard and um i don't know this is kind of a different one because i just thought that the lady in the song was really funny funny <laughs> 
like I don't know I have a weird taste in things like that are kind of like non-typical I mm. find non-typical things really funny and some people may not like I don't know I, I like puns and people are like oh my god no and I'm just like haha I like it <laughs> so, yeah. yeah puns are nice to a varying degree mm-hmm. I learned that the hard way <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Like, bring it on. I like puns. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah. And yours? Yeah. So, yeah, that's... It's totally perfect that you mentioned you like the old school stuff because I yeah. picked, like, two older songs, too. Um, just because I thought they'd go along with the vibe of the one you sent me, not mm-hmm. knowing that you want the old school ones. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll touch on the K-pop one first because mm-hmm. it's, like, the newest one. Just came out in February. Uh, and it's by Boa, who's, like, essentially the Beyonce of K-pop. Mm-hmm. So, I remember her. There was... What's that song? Like, she had quite like, a few. Like, there's like a school bus or something in one of the... Maybe, yeah. She's been around for like quite a few years. Yeah. Also has like hits in Korea and Japan. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she does some English ones too. It wouldn't surprise me if she did. I think so. Yeah. So the one that I have picked for today is called One Shot, Two Shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I think the the instrumental goes along with the, the remixes that you already chose, which would be nice. Mm-hmm. Um, an older one that I liked when it first came out and then... I feel like it didn't get super big. It got like it got like relatively well known, but it's called Sleepless by Cosette featuring the High. Okay. Um, it has some cool like synthy vocals mm-hmm. to it. Like before, big synthy vocals were super popular. I remember playing this at um, uh, a wedding that I DJed, and it was like the worst wedding I ever DJed. It was for like another company. Okay. And um, this was the, the first wedding they sent me to do like on my own with very minimal training. And they were like, oh, here's a, we, we have this game that we haven't taught you and you have to host it for them. And I'm like, well, this isn't going to go very well. <laughs> yeah. So there was kind of like a sour wedding the whole day. And then mm. at, at, during the dance parts, there weren't many people dancing because they just weren't feeling it <laughs> just because I was awkward the whole time, not knowing what I was doing. Mm. And then the very last song was just, I just thought I'd play this because I really like the song and no one's dancing anyway. So I'm just going to play what I like. <laughs> Okay. So, sorry to those people who had to go through that at the wedding, but it was fully acknowledged by the DJ company that it was on them to provide me the proper training to do this stuff. So, it was just... Uh, well, that's how you learn, right? An unfortunate night, yeah. And, and <laughs> now I know. Uh, and then, the classic song that... It, you have to know this one. Infinity, the class vocal mix by Guru Josh Project. If you don't know the name, you'll definitely recognize yeah, it when you hear it. Yeah, I'm not very good with like song names. Yeah, this one's like, uh, uh, it's like, here's my key philosophy. Something, Maybe. something, infinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't, I it won't say. Like something I would like, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> but yeah, this song, uh, Guru Josh, mm-hmm. actually, I think, uh, I don't know what other songs he came out with, but this one's like, once you hear it, you know, like, mm-hmm. the, the horn sounds at the beginning. You're like, oh, yeah, that song. I think this one's from 10 years ago now, 2008. Okay. And he he actually passed away, like, a few years ago. No. Or pretty recently, yeah. So it's kind of a sad note. But uh, the guy who remixed the song mm-hmm. is still still kicking. Okay. He's doing okay. Yeah, <laughs> so those are my three songs. So I think they'll all go together pretty nicely. Mm-hmm. The instrumental fits. Got some old school vibes in there. So, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah, so... That's our music. Those are our passions. And you heard a bit of our projects, including the podcast you're listening to and watching right now. So we'll cut it off here. And I'll just say some closing regards so that I don't forget. I wrote them down on a note again, which I'll be continuing to do. So I'm not looking at my computer screen off in the distance all the time. So thank you for listening. And thank you for watching the Beat Bits podcast, episode 11. If you like what you heard and like what you watched, please heart, comment, follow on SoundCloud, leave a review on iTunes, leave me some comments, give me some thumbs up or thumbs down, please subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for some inspirational shit posts all week long, (laughs) and yeah, feel free to reach out, talk to me if you want to be a guest or introduce some, or suggest some topics, and yeah, they'll be on the show, so that's all for today, say bye Roxine. Hi, Roxy. <laughs> See you guys.